Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Hopkinton. If you haven't seen the show before, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an attorney. I work at Myrick O'Connell. There are 70 of us there, a boatload of attorneys. And as a result, everybody gets to do what they like. I like doing elder law, so that's all I do. This show, though, is not about elder law. It's about my friends Frank and Mary. Uh, if you've seen any of my presentations, you know that their goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that, if that means Hopkinton, that means they don't want to be buried in the backyard like in San Diego where their kids live or far away. They want to stay here. So the goal is how, do they, how can we help them know the people they need to know and the programs they need to know about um, in order to be able to stay here until they die? And so today's, actually the guests that we have today are just great and apropos to all of this stuff. And of course, my wonderful co-host, Amy Beck, who uh, runs the Senior Center, okay. uh, has been here now for... Oh, oh, over seven years. Over seven years. Uh, time marches on. It does. <laughs> and and has, is the person who's been willing to be my co-host because she's the person who knows everybody and she gets these great guests. And you've got great guests today. Uh, and we do. Let's talk about who, who do we have well, first we have um, Sean McAuliffe, who's the health department uh, chair, head, director. Uh, director sorry. Big, big guy. Big, big guy. Big, big guy. Yeah. Um, and then we have also Casey Morrow, who is our new public health nurse. That's really exciting. It this is very is, exciting. This is really, and you said new, like as in new, not like she just replaced somebody, but new no, as in like for is, the last 20 years you haven't had a public health. It is health. completely new. And so we're really excited about what that brings to Hopkinton and the health department and how it expands what, what the health department can do. And I bet that Sean was a big advocate for this. Yes. So can, can you, Sean, can you just tell us a little bit about, once again, I, how long have you been here? I know that you're relatively new. So right? I've been here two years. Yeah, and, and what did you do before? How did you end up doing this stuff? And then, and what are you doing? And I, yeah. I was an environmental consultant, and then I was also, uh, I left consulting um, about 10 years, ago, 20 years ago almost, yeah. and yeah. then went into uh, food safety and uh, food service. And, um, and when the, I saw this opening, it was, uh, it was op at an opportune moment right. to uh, come in and in here, it was you know there was a chance for me to create um, a new program, just as with Casey, uh, you know she's got an opportunity to really develop something from scratch. That's re that's really exciting, and I know that f certainly food service is a big chunk of some of the right. things that, that that the Department of Health do. And by the way, for folks who are watching, you know we'll, we want to talk to we want to talk to Casey, but can you just kind of give a, a really a, a sense of of what 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 happens at the at the at the health department? The health department think? covers everything from you know burial permits. So I'm the one who signs signs the uh, certificates to your wells, your septic, um, healthy aging um, your initiatives, restu your restaurant, restaurants, restaurants. It's just um, it, really everything. There isn't anything. In, that goes on in this town that doesn't have some um, tie in some tie into the uh, health department. So it's and that's what's exciting because we really have an opportunity to look at what the needs are in the in the town, right. and we can start catering the department to really address those needs. Yeah, and so, I know that Amy's been talking about the health, you know, kind of healthy aging and those those mm -hmm. related issues as really being key since she's become the big time senior center director, right? So they must be working with her a lot. Yeah, and at the end of the day, our, our job, we have a, a mutual interest in, right. in, in ensuring that the residents of Hopkinton have um, the, either the, the care or the services that are necessary to um, help them live um, a full life um, with all the accessibility they could desire but stay in Hopkinton and... Yeah, well, and that's what we're looking for. We want people to be able to age in place. We want people who have lived in Hopkinton their whole lives to continue to live in Hopkinton, and how can we make it happen? Right. And I think, you know, we've been looking at a lot of things. One of the biggest things that we're working on right now is an age and dementia-friendly community, which means that, you know, I think there's a lot said about Hopkinton schools, and they're great, and that's important. But what about the the people who are not in the schools any longer, and what can we do to make their lives better? And I think, you know, we're working towards this age and friendly initiative, um, and also we're finding things that that are across. You talk about restaurants that we're working towards for Purple Table, which is having 
uh, the restaurants be able to work with clientele who come in who may have either cognitive or even in the case of autism behavior issues that might need a different approach in a restaurant or a different placement in a restaurant which helps them become less stimulated. And so we're looking at a lot of initiatives that, that really go towards seniors but also have a broader reach. That's great. That's great. Because seniors are kind of like a subset of a kind of a broader population that might have some special needs. And I know, I know that that's one of the things that's really changed. I think for a lot of us over time, we always thought of people with disabilities. Well, that's kind of them, you know, that have okay. disabilities. And it's only now, I think, with the aging of the baby boom, where you realize people with disabilities, that's me, you know, in like five <laughs> right. years and 10 years, that's I'm, me. I'm, I'm not too far off. Right. So, so, so you're, well, and, and Amy's far away. And oh, Heather, not really. oh my God. <laughs> right. but, but I, I, I think. Well, you know, yeah, it's, no, it, no, it's, it, it is here. It, it comes. It, it comes. Is here. So I think people are just much more aware of it. That, and for Frank and Mary, they know the goal of b acting now to build those programs. You're really doing it for others, but you're really doing it for yourself too, right? Well, so. you, you take Triple E for instance. You know, this this summer, everybody was so focused on, you know, what are we, what steps are we taking to protect the the students in the Hopkins schools? Well, the reality is there were two sets of highly susceptible populations. It was the school children and the seniors. So, you know, my question to the other communities around here, what are you guys doing to support the seniors? You know, we did a follow up with, you know, Fairfield or Fairview and um, Golden Pond. Yeah. We looked at the, the residential neighborhoods that had the highest senior populations and we coordinated ground spraying in those areas. So we could say that we were addressing both populations and that's, that's what's key to this mm -hmm. whole initiative is making sure that we're providing these services to these populations and, and making sure that we're, we're addressing all of the residents equally. Uh, across the whole yeah. community, not just one subset. Right. And but I think that's the biggest piece. And I think it's, it's really interesting to, the, I think a lot of local taxpayers would think about their taxpayer dollars at work when they think of the schools. But to, to think that their dollars are at work uh, mm -hmm. you know, for this really other very, very large set, subset that does have some vulnerabilities, right. you know, it's mm -hmm. just, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. So as, so as part of this, you decided that you needed a nurse? Yes, it was, it's, 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 it's critical. I mean, one of the things that they don't, most people don't realize is that when you go to the physician and you're, you're diagnosed with an illness and you prescribe some, um, either a medication or a, um, uh, you know, a, a change in behavior or yeah. whatever. Um, it's if it's a diagn if it's a reportable disease or illness mm -hmm. that gets reported back to the health department, and then it's our job in the health department to help figure out how you um, contracted the disease or what factors led to you um, being diagnosed with that illness. So here we have an opportunity. So I can address things like Triple E, Lyme disease, foodborne illnesses, and Casey now can come in and help um, fill that gap and provide that education, that extra level of service that um, that our you know our seniors in this case would deserve, mm -hmm. and um, and we could help you know uplift or increase the overall health of the community if we're working in concert and then working in concert Before with the- Before we talk uh, to, can I just have one more, just one more question. Have you, is this something that's happening across a lot of communities in Massachusetts, this kind of increasing awareness of the importance of public health? Or is this something which is, I don't want to say unique to Hopkinton, but is Hopkinton kind of the exception in terms of really focusing on this right now? I'm just curious because I seldom, seldom hear about this, you know, in a lot mm -hmm. of other places. But, I mean, there's a, there's a growing initiative that's coming out of several of the universities that are local to Massachusetts that are helping to, I guess, push this and um, really bring this whole concept and the whole issue to the forefront. And, and then it's it's up to health directors or health departments or, or our board to support these initiatives. And we, we have a very supportive board. And I mean, they've, they've pretty much, in, in both of our cases, they're gonna, they, they're letting us run, you know, identify those issues that are pertinent um, to the community that yeah. we're going to get the, the have the greatest impact on, and then we can go and cater programming to uh, to address those. That's really exciting. It is exciting, really exciting, and I think it is important to note that Hopkinton is unique in the respect that we are really pushing this. So this is not every community around us, I believe, has this, and so no. we are kind of on the cutting edge of all of that. That's exciting. It is exciting. Right, and speaking of the cutting edge, right? Cutting edge. We have Casey. Here she is. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, no, I think I think Hopkinton has made like a big move, not just having a public health nurse because other towns have public health nurses, but I'm, I'm full time, so not only can I do like the bare minimum basics that you would expect from public health, but I'm also able to to do a little bit more for our community. Um, one of the things, because this is a new program and it, and we haven't had a nurse for 20 years, so there's no model for me to work off of. So, so by the way, before you get into that, just as a curious, so how did you get here? You don't, <laughs> you're not, you're not exactly an old person either. Um, it doesn't, no, right? I'm not old. Yeah. Um, I'm old enough. Well, you know, yeah. it's just see, for people <laughs> my age. You, you, it's you, important you, to note because <laughs> uh, people always ask me if I'm, if I'm old enough to be here. Like, does my mom know I'm here? Like, I'm old enough to be here. I have a husband. I have three kids. I have two dogs. Like, I'm, I'm old this enough. To be here. Boy, those kids must look real young. <laughs> they are oh young. My, oh they are young. But, but I got them. I got them. Yeah. So I'm old enough to have that. Uh, like, that's great. But um, so how, I, so how, how did, did you end, I end up, up here? Yeah. Um, yeah. Originally, like how I ended up in Hopkinton, uh, I used to live in Southie, and I was a nurse in at Spalding, Cambridge. Mm -hmm. I did chemo infusions there. Uh, my husband was determined to make it back out this way. We moved to Hopkinton. Yeah. I fell in love with the town. Um, we, you know, planted our roots here, and then I took a year off from work to raise my first baby. Um, went to work at St. Vincent's Hospital. I started on the chemo floor there for a year, did um, cardiac, like kind of like stepped on unit for them yeah. for a year, and then went to the ICU, and that's where I was for the past three years. So that was I my get home. It. And then you decide to do this, which and is then, a ch that's yeah, a change. By some, my husband was talking, you know, I got three kids, so I'm trying to figure out, like, what, how maybe I can still work and be my own person and use my, like, in, very impressive brain in this way, but still kind of be close enough to home. And so I just happened to type in, like, nursing jobs in Hockington, and then this, po this post popped popped up and literally I think there was like 23 hours for me to apply. I did. I submitted my stuff and waited, you know, <laughs> had my first interview and then really waited <laughs> and had my second interview and here I am. That's, that's great. Mm -hmm. That's great. And so what are you thinking? We were talking a little bit before the show. You said this is, you know, it was really exciting because you really get to kind of you know, work, working with your boss and yeah. kind of really design your own program. So what am I thinking? So, um, I haven't been in public health before, which like maybe that's an advantage because I, you know, don't know what I'm allowed to do. So I'm just going to do everything. Right. Um, you know, my first like thing to do was to go to kind of around town and see mm -hmm. like where the needs were. So one of the first things I did, I actually went mm -hmm. to the senior center, talked to Amy, got to visit, see like what are the services that are provided there, like how I can supplement those. Um, and then Later on in the week, I actually went to the Memory Cafe and sat down mm -hmm. with a couple people. And it was just really nice just That's to hear great. from residents yeah. about what they're looking for um, in town as far as services go. Specifically, somebody had mentioned they were really wanting us to be dementia friendly. So I'm trying to figure out, along with Amy, like how we can make that happen, like if whatever I need to do to you know, become like dementia friendly, a, de a dementia champion, like, mm -hmm. you know, let's, let's get there because it's important to people in town. So it's important to me. Absolutely. Right. right. Um, that's, and that's really exciting. So it's great. You have a person. Well, it, it is. That's, that's just where you've been saying you want, you've been wanting to go. It is. And, I, and I'm excited. Just, They're starting to coming the into the It's this all coming great. together yeah. now, yeah. which is yeah. great. And, yeah. and I think, you know, Casey's very open to getting uh, the dementia champion training, which allows her to go out into the community and explain to others and give information sessions so that other people can become dementia friends. And as we expand that out, we're hoping to, we're working with first responders, we're working with town um, offices, but also we want it to be in the community, in the stores and the restaurants and all of that. So Casey will be a big part of that, which we're really excited about. And that's yeah. a huge deal. Cause I mean, I think, I think many people, when you talk about dementia, I think that's mm -hmm. what you, you always hear is that deme dementia is a classic public health issue. Right. In that it's it's not a matter. There's you know we're not looking for the magic pill here that brings your brings your memory back. You know yeah. you're looking for uh, how do you care? How do you accommodate? Right. How well, do you accommodate? And you know? to break down the stigma attached right. to it. I mean because right. that's the biggest piece. I think so many people have a misunderstanding or not really an expanded idea of what that means to people living with dementia and and Alzheimer's. And and I think this is important that as a community we're aware of it that that people. I mean, we, we do accept, we do look at other people and we make accommodations, but let's be on the on board about this. Let's make sure that across the board, across the community, that we're aware that we're working together towards this. And I think 
you know, we're really excited that, that both Sean and, and Casey are behind us with this initiative as well. And now once again, I'm going to ask, have you, and I know you've only been here a limited time, but have you heard of any other communities where they're really looking at dementia friendly as kind of a public yeah, health so piece? There are, yes. There are other, there are other towns, like Ashland is right next to us and they are mm -hmm. dementia friendly, they're mm -hmm. police and fire. Um, you know, so I look at other towns and what like programs they have and just I'm trying to figure out a way like how we can get those here. So Massachusetts uh, um, is very um, is, is leading the way. There are a lot of other states, but Massachusetts is very, I want to say, uh, I think almost every town is working towards having that designation and awareness. And so I think there are a lot of memory cafes in a lot of communities. A lot of towns are working toward that. And it, again, it's bringing the town together to support it. Right. Right, and I suppose if you got a lot of towns working, then, then you're also going to find people in other places, people on the on the health side mm -hmm. that are kind of looking at it from that same lens. Yeah. Which once again is is not. I guess my sense is so often people don't think of public health. People think of health totally as a as an individual thing, mm -hmm. you know, as yeah. opposed to really something that's really in the community. So it's a great way to be kind of just pushing exactly what you're doing. Yeah. Right? No, I mean, like, that's that's one of the things, like, I'm looking into. And then also just for my own, like, initiative, um, you know, in my history, I'm, I've always been acute care nurse. Like, I only know how to be a nurse, you know. So one of the things, like, I'm trying to develop is um, at-home visits. I'm not going to have an office for some time, mm -hmm. but I will be able to offer services to everyone in Hopkinton, specifically services like um, either a wound care clinic or a fall assessment, if, like a health assessment. If someone came home from the hospital, ideally I would like to be there somewhere between like 24 and 72 hours, like after they get home. So we can talk about how they got into the hospital, like how we can avoid an, a, them being re readmitted. That's, you know, and just trying to, that's trying to you know, make that, like bridge that gap there. Because as an acute care nurse, I think, we would see a person leave on Friday and know that they weren't really ready, whether that they, they may were just, be back on whether they were just Friday, yeah. yesing the doctor because they just wanted to like just get home and sleep in their own bed, or they like don't want to appear like they don't know what they're doing. Um, but then they'd be back on Monday, you know, because right. because they didn't quite understand something, mm -hmm. or they weren't quite healthy enough to go home. And so you know. how, how and how will you coordinate that with say the VNAs that are that are doing some stuff with folks that are so, coming home or with the hospital? Because now that you mentioned that, you know, you, you, we're also so fortunate. You're so fortunate. You have Mildred Hospital mm -hmm. right. that's so close and is so just seems to be so proactive in oh, terms yeah. of their dealing with a lot of these. You know, realizing they're a community hospital. That, yeah. That the measure of their success is not their numbers; it's the community's numbers, which is great. Just great. Yeah, I mean, I think like something like Milford Hospital and like the VNA, like those are so broad, you know. I'm just the public health nurse for Hawkington, so like I'm just here for the residents of Hawkington that need these types of service. They're free of charge. You don't have to have insurance to have them. You know, you don't have to be. I want that. I want my face to be somebody that. So you know, something that people know so that you know, like if if they have a need, they can go, oh, I have a friend who's a nurse, her name's Casey, and I'm going to call her, you know, because that's usually how people react to, like, a health crisis. Right. You know, and I want, I want that to kind of be the reaction for people. So, mm -hmm. there, so and there, there aren't criteria like income eligibility or any of that no. in terms of your, no, no, it's, it's a, just it's you have to be in Hoppington. It'd be 100% free for residents of Hoppington, um, you know, and I'm still working out, like, the kinks, like, I'm doing, like, an, an EMAR, so, like, electronic medical recording. Um, you know, so I'm, yes. so I'm like, you know, up to it's date a, and it's an EMAR. What is that? An EMAR get? is like, um, instead of me coming to your house and filling out a bunch of paper charts, yeah. you know, and you wonder where my paper's going, it goes yeah. into like a secure electronic database. I see. Um, I see. And then working on also a scheduling app. So we should hopefully be developing our page right. at the, um, health department to make it a little bit more user friendly. There should be like just a little logo you can click in, make those appointments. Um, and then I would just show up at your house. You would choose like the service you're looking for and I would show up and we would, you know, do an intake and then talk about how I can help you stay healthy and at home, you know? So and the only caveat to that is working with seniors, some are not as computer ready, so sure, being yeah. able to take those right. that information over. They the don't phone have to fill it out. Yeah. Right. They don't have to fill it out. I would come to their house and fill mm -hmm. it out myself. Like, right. Which is important don't have to. because, you know, I, I will eventually, you know, I, I'm, like, I'm like 10 days in, so I don't even have my own computer yet. <laughs> <Do it. laughs> 
<laughs> so, but I will have my own computer. I will have a cell phone, um, you know, that people are able, like if they're not able to get online or they don't understand how to navigate the website, like they could easily just pick up the phone, call my cell, I'll input the information and I'll be yep. there at the right. time that we talked about. So, so, I'm, so I'm curious, Amy, from your perspective, because now you, met, you mentioned that and I was thinking about that even as it, it, was, it comes to our show or whatever, I'm mm -hmm. saying to myself, I wonder how many people even know how to click on this show, you know, how to right. you know, do, how do you deal with that? You know, because it, it really is a, it's, it's a really difficult. And I know that one of the problems, it's getting greater, the problem of communication is getting greater and greater now because of the evaporation of print media. So the, mm -hmm. the people that used to pick all this stuff up in the Middlesex News or whatever, it's like what Middlesex News? The papers are so tiny. And we're, we're, but the other available media are like this, you right. know, or like email. How, and and how do you how do you deal with that? <laughs> well, it must we, be a challenge. Well, as a senior center, we do have our newsletter, which we yeah. use to send out to people 16 and over in the community. Um, so if you're not getting them, they certainly should reach out to us, and we'll make right. sure you're on a mailing list. Right. Um, people can get it online, but we do have a print version. And you know, stop by for information or call. Um, you know, I, I think that's the one thing. I look at the, the teenagers in the 20s and they, they hate phones. Um, but the generation that we deal with, they're used to the phone. And so they call actually us. sometimes they, answer, they actually, they actually answer the they phone. They answer right. the phone, they call right. on the phone, and so use that to reach out to us. And right. the same thing with the health department. If you have a needs, give them a call. Um, they definitely are, are that able to answer that kind of uh, response. They can respond to your calls that way. But, you know, there is also the computer version right. for all of this. But. Yeah. And it, it's a challenge. I just, I mentioned it because I, I know we're, we're, I do some stuff in, in Westboro and I know that the high school mm -hmm. is doing kind of a, a, almost like a service project really mm -hmm. of go, getting, going out to seniors yeah. to, t to teach them or, or like on a volunteer basis, you can call in and they'll, and they'll, they'll, they'll go to help just to help you figure it out. You well, know? and that's the good thing at the senior center. We do have a computer lab. We have six oh, computers. Yeah. We do have um, someone who can assist you every morning. And then in the afternoons after school, we do have kids that come over from the high school and we'll help you with your technology. It's not just computers, but your technology, whether it's your phone or your iPad or whatever. Oh, so that's great. We, we do offer that. Yeah. Uh, and, and hopefully people are taking advantage of it. I know that a lot are, and I think it's great to see the kids come to us saying, we want to do this. And, and they, they're great with the seniors. We don't go into people's homes. We don't have the kids go into people's homes right. in Hopkinton. But they can but certainly that, come the, the to the senior open. center, and we're open. Right. Uh, whenever we're open, there should be someone there who could help them. That's a great service, yes. which, once again, many seniors may not, may not be aware of, that right. you can just kind of go in to figure it out. Because, I was going to say, this is one of the things that we're trying to do on a regional basis, is figure out how to tackle you know, these issues on how do we provide that outreach um, to the senior population because they're not maybe as adept with the computer. And, and we don't want, you know, we, we really can't afford to drop um, or just underrepresent that population when it comes right. to be it Triple E notification, be it right. services, you know, service opportunities. Well, and some of that is changing. I mean, as the demographics change, as you have more boomers, they have spent their lives working in computers, or at least the last 20, 30 years of their lives working with computers. So that has changed. But I mean, there are there's still a, a group of the population that is not as I know my mother. You know, 88, almost 88 years old. And she she's thinks not ready to learn. No, she would, thinks no. computers are a four-letter word. So, I mean, I think it's great to have that, you know, someone who will work through you. But we do have other means of, of reaching out to people. And obviously, people are still aware of the TV. And if they're watching cable, they can get these programs as well. So Right. And I think, and that's, I think one of the reasons why the show can be of use mm -hmm. is that it, 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 it's... It, from the cable station's perspective, I know that they really realize that a lot of the viewership comes from from mm -hmm. seniors, right? And from the seniors' perspective, if you're not get if you're having trouble getting out, right. you know, and the, and the Middlesex News is no longer telling you that it gives you this kind of this ability to have this conversation. Absolutely. So what else are you what else are you thinking about in terms of it, with, now that you've I, it sounds like you you you've already figured out a good a lot of uses for your spare time, right? Uh, yeah. But, no, I've definitely <laughs> I've definitely been able to fill it. Um, yeah. I have about like 10 folders, maybe yeah. more going on my folder of just um, like ideas that people have given me for the town. Um, you know, just this morning I had called 
ma like the mass stock of like to speak to them about starting like our vaccination program like how do I get that going so we're definitely ready next year and we can have yeah. it here for residents without have them having to go other places mm -hmm. that'd be pretty wonderful yeah right well yeah. we have had a flu clinic and we've uh, last couple of years so there is has been that but yeah. you're talking about expanding it even yeah no, to I'm cover other things which is great like, you know not just for seniors but they're also do I be able to do like um, pediatric vaccines and just you know getting us everything that we deserve in this town which I think is everything we can get and it's just and how, and how do you see that connecting into everything that you're doing? Well, and part of, part of my job is obviously to support all of her initiatives, but it's, it's then stepping back and seeing, you know, how do we, you know, how do we improve um, accessibility? Mm -hmm. um, how can I do that working with, you know, the, our state legislatures, our legislators um, to improve th that issue? How do we, how do we, like, some of the, the hunger needs that might exist in the community? Um, and it's, it's looking at, and it's really, it's, what we've done is we've started breaking down all these silos that exist between different departments and just start asking, you know, right. what, what is the need and how can I help fill that need? And it's really just asking a lot of questions to figure out, you know, where we can position ourselves to best support, you know, the residents. And, and, and I have to say, it sounds like, so I, I work in a lot of communities and I do the show in 11 with different folks, it just seems like that every, not just you, everybody seems young here. It's like you, <laughs> everybody, everybody, it just seems that some, like it's just, it's a there's, secret. there's kind of a vibrance to it and, and kind of a willingness to do that. Right. Once again, to get, a, to, to cut across silos, right? right. To get, to mm -hmm. have everybody involved because you're really trying to build a community, right. you're not just trying to build your little department of the world. Well, and that's the thing. Hopkinton <laughs> is, I, I think, want to be seen as a kind, caring community, yeah. and this is one more way that we right. can do that. So listen, thank you very much, both of you, for coming. This mm -hmm. was great. Thank you, Amy. Once again, you get great guests all the time, and we We're don't lucky. even have to pay them that much. This no, is, I didn't have terrific. to. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for watching. We'll look forward to seeing you on the uh, next installment of Frank and Mary here in Hopkinton. Thank you very much. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get in a $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you.